In this video, our topic is the magnetic field due to a current in a straight wire. We're going to learn how to calculate the strength of the magnetic field produced by a current in such a wire, and we'll also learn how to determine the direction of that field. As we get started, see that we have a section of wire here, that is, a conducting material, but that no current is presently in the wire. We know that under these circumstances, no magnetic field will be produced. But then say that this wire starts to carry some current, we'll call it I. Now, even though we're just considering this wire segment that we see on screen, we can imagine that this portion of wire is part of a larger closed loop, allowing current to exist in it. Now that this current is present, a magnetic field is indeed created around the wire. And if we were to look at the wire end on, say we would do this by putting our eye here in relation to it, and if the magnetic field lines were somehow visible to us, we would see that this magnetic field actually extends an arbitrarily far distance away from the axis of the wire. Here, we've only drawn so many field lines, but really, we could keep adding them and keep adding them to show that this magnetic field exists no matter how far away from the wire's axis we travel. Let's say that, looking at this end-on view of our wire, we want to figure out the magnitude of the magnetic field it produces at some point, say, this point right here. If we say that this point is a distance we'll call d away from our wire's axis, and knowing that our wire carries a current of magnitude i, there's a way we can combine these parameters to solve for the magnetic field strength, we'll call it b. Along with these variables of the current i and the distance d, the magnetic field strength at some location from the wire also depends on this constant. It's called mu naught. It's the permeability of free space. The value that this constant takes on represents how difficult it is to magnetize free space or a vacuum. When we look at the units of this constant, tesla meters per ampere, we see that indeed it relates magnetic field strength in units of teslas with distance in units of meters and current in unit of amperes. For a segment of straight wire, like we have in this case, the strength of the magnetic field, a perpendicular distance d away from that wire, is equal to this constant mu naught times the magnitude of the current the wire carries, all divided by 2 times pi times d. Now, if we were to take this point here, at which we're interested in solving for the magnetic field strength, and plot it on our sketch of the wire where we're looking at it side on, if that point, say, were right here in space, then it's important to realize that the distance d we would use in our calculation for this field strength is indeed a distance measured perpendicularly from the wire's axis. Enforcing this constraint means we always use the minimum distance between a point of interest and the wire. And recall that even though we haven't drawn magnetic field lines at this point here, we know that it's nonetheless within the field created by this current carrying wire. And that's because this field extends infinitely far out from the wire. Now, at first, that fact may seem a bit much, but as we look at the specific form of this equation, it begins to make more sense. Notice that the magnetic field strength, B, is inversely proportional to the perpendicular distance from the wire. This means as D increases, as we get farther and farther away from the wire's axis, the magnetic field, B, gets weaker and weaker. So as D gets very, very large, say, as it approaches infinity, our corresponding magnetic field strength gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero. So even though a wire carrying current generates a magnetic field at all distances away from the wire, the field gets weaker and weaker the farther away we get. So we see then that given a straight current carrying wire, if we know the magnitude of the current in the wire, then we can calculate the magnetic field strength a perpendicular distance d away from it. This shows us how to solve for the field magnitude, but what about its direction? After all, magnetic field is a vector quantity. And we see that for the magnetic field lines we've drawn, they do have a direction indicated. To figure this out, we use what is called a right-hand rule. The name for this rule comes from the fact that we use our right hand to determine this direction. The way this rule works, when we have a straight current carrying wire, such as this one we've sketched here, is that we point the thumb on our right hand in the direction the current points. In this case, that's to the right. Then what we do is we curl our four fingers, almost like we're making a fist. By doing this, our fingers are curling in the direction of the magnetic field created about the axis of the wire we're thinking of. So in the case of this wire here, with current pointed to the right, we can see that our fingers would curl like this, which is why we've given these magnetic field lines the directions that we have. 
We could also imagine doing this from this perspective, the one where we see the wire end on. Here, the current is pointed out of the screen at us, and so we would arrange the thumb on our right hand to point in that direction. Then, if we curl our fingers in the direction our hand allows, we see that they curl in what, from this perspective, is a counterclockwise direction. And that's why we've given the magnetic field the direction arrows we have here, because according to this right-hand rule, that's the direction it points. One way to think about this right-hand rule is that, since we apply it to a long, straight current-carrying wire, we can almost picture putting our hand on the wire with our thumb pointed in the direction of the current and then curling our four fingers about it as we see here. The direction of that curl indicates the direction of the magnetic field lines around the wire. We see from our end-on sketch of the current carrying wire that magnetic field lines can be drawn as concentric rings and notice that no matter how big the rings get, the direction of the field always stays the same in relation to the wire. That is, it's always moving the same direction, whether clockwise or counterclockwise, we could say, about the wire. So, we now know a way to calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire, and we also know how to determine its direction using this right-hand rule. Knowing this, let's get a bit of practice now through an example exercise. A long, straight cable in an industrial power plant carries a direct current of 100 amperes, Calculate the strength of the resulting magnetic field at a perpendicular distance of 0.06 meters from this cable. Use 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th tesla meters per ampere for the value of mu naught. Give your answer in scientific notation to two decimal places. Alright, so in this example we have a long straight wire. We can imagine it going on even beyond the length that we've drawn here. And we're told that this wire carries a current, I, of 100 amperes. That's a lot of current, but then again, this is an industrial power plant. Our problem statement tells us that if we go a perpendicular distance of 0.06 meters from the wire, and we'll call that distance D, then we want to solve for the strength of the magnetic field at that distance. We can refer to that magnetic field as capital B, and we can recall a mathematical relationship for the strength of the magnetic field a perpendicular distance D from a current carrying wire. It's equal to a constant, mu naught, the permeability of free space, multiplied by the current in the wire divided by 2 times pi times the distance from the wire d. Since our problem statement tells us i and d, as well as the value to use for mu naught, we can substitute those given values into this equation. Here, we've used 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th tesla meters per ampere for mu naught, 100 amperes for the current i, and 0.06 meters for the distance d. All the units in this expression are already in the form we'd like them, and we can see that when we calculate this fraction, the units of meters in numerator and denominator will cancel out, as will the units of amperes. We'll be left with an answer in units of teslas, which is good because we're calculating a magnetic field strength. When we compute B, and we give our answer in scientific notation keeping two decimal places, we find that it's equal to 3.33 times 10 to the negative fourth teslas, that's the strength of the magnetic field this perpendicular distance away from the wire. Let's look now at a second example exercise. The diagram shows a long, straight, horizontal wire that carries a current I. As a result of the current, a magnetic field is produced, which is measured at point P. The point P is in the plane of the wire, a short perpendicular distance from the wire. What is the direction of the magnetic field at point P? In our diagram, we see this long straight wire carrying a current I, and then what we're told is a short perpendicular distance from the wire is this point marked point P. Now, because this wire carries a current, we know it will produce a magnetic field around itself. This field extends arbitrarily far away from the axis of the wire, which means that this point P right here will experience it. In this question, though, we're not interested in the strength of that field at point P, but rather its direction. And when we're talking about the direction of the magnetic field produced by a long current carrying wire, we can remember that we can figure this out using what's called a right hand rule. When we use this rule, we take our right hand and we imagine positioning it so we're almost grasping on to this current carrying wire. Next, we point our thumb in the direction of the current in the wire and we then curl our fingers around this imaginary wire axis. When we do this, the direction that our fingers curl indicates the direction of the magnetic field around this wire. Note that the way we've been talking about this right-hand rule aligns with the way that our wire is oriented in this exercise. 
The wire is aligned left to right, and the current in it points to the right, which means that this application of the right-hand rule we just saw answers the question for us of which way the magnetic field around this current-carrying wire points. That field will exist in concentric circles, and we've just drawn a very few of those loops here, around our wire. This means that if we were to draw a magnetic field line centered on our current carrying wire and passing through point P, that line would look something like this. Now, just to see this from a different perspective, imagine that we put our eye here in relation to our current carrying wire. If we did that, we would see the wire end on looking something like this, and say that in relation to the wire's axis, point P was right here. What we've seen from applying this right-hand rule is that the field line moves like this through that point. Now, for the sake of our answer to this question, it's important to consider our perspective with the original diagram. That is, in what direction does the magnetic field move through point P looking at the wire this way? We can see that from this perspective, the magnetic field line moves into the screen at this point, and so that's our answer. The direction of the magnetic field at point P is into the screen. Let's look now at one last example exercise. A long wire is carrying a direct current. As a result, a magnetic field of 8.0 times 10 to the negative fifth teslas can be measured at a perpendicular distance of 13 centimeters from the wire. What would the strength of the magnetic field be at a perpendicular distance of 26 centimeters from the wire? Give your answer in scientific notation to one decimal place. All right, so let's say that this is our long wire that's carrying a direct current. As a result of this current, we're told that if we go out a perpendicular distance from the wire of 13 centimeters, then we can measure a magnetic field strength of 8.0 times 10 to the negative fifth teslas. Building on this, our question asks, if we were to travel out from our wire a perpendicular distance of 26 centimeters, then what would be the strength of the magnetic field at that distance from the wire? So then, we know the strength of the magnetic field created by this wire a distance of 13 centimeters away from it, we can call that field strength B13, and it's equal to 8.0 times 10 to the negative fifth teslas. And what we want to do is solve for the field strength a distance of 26 centimeters from the wire, what we'll call B26. Now, because these two magnetic field strengths, B13 and B26, are due to the same current in the same wire, we can be helped by recalling that, in general, the magnetic field created by a current carrying straight wire is equal to the constant mu naught, the permeability of free space, times the current in the wire, divided by 2 times pi times the distance from the wire at which we're measuring the field. For our purposes, the most interesting aspect of this equation is how the magnetic field strength B varies with the distance from the wire D. We can see that B varies as 1 over D, or in other words is inversely proportional to it. This means, for example, that if we were to double our perpendicular distance from a given wire, then we would cut in half the strength of the magnetic field at that point. And in fact, that's exactly what we're doing here in this example. We started out a perpendicular distance of 13 centimeters from our wire. We can consider that our original distance. And then we doubled that to 26 centimeters. By this relationship here, we can see that when we double the distance D, we cut B in half. And so, given that this is the magnetic field strength, a distance of 13 centimeters from our wire, we can expect that B26 will be one half of this. And the reason we know that is that B26 is the strength of the magnetic field at twice the distance from the wire where B13 was measured. In doubling our distance, we've halved our field strength. And so, in scientific notation to one decimal place, B26 is 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth teslas. This is the strength of the magnetic field a distance of 26 centimeters from the wire. Let's summarize now what we've learned about the magnetic field due to a current in a straight wire. In this lesson, we saw that a long, straight, current-carrying wire produces a magnetic field around itself. The magnitude of that field is given by B, where B is equal to the constant mu naught times the current in the wire, I, all divided by 2 times pi times D, where D is the perpendicular distance between the wire and the point at which the field is being calculated. We saw further that as D increases, B, the magnetic field strength, decreases proportionally. Written using symbols, we can say that B is inversely proportional to D. And lastly, we saw that the direction of the magnetic field produced by a straight current-carrying wire is given by what's called a right-hand rule. Using this rule, we can imagine putting the palm of our right hand up against our current-carrying wire with our thumb pointed in the direction of current travel, 
And then as we curl the fingers on our hand around this imaginary axis, the direction in which they curl indicates the direction of the magnetic field about this wire. This is a summary of the magnetic field due to a current in a straight wire. 